Hello, 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 John Mason. How is everybody? Hope you're all well. Hope things are top-notch for you. And I hope things are top-notch for America. Again, I'll say it. Vote blue all the way through. And Joe Biden has no freaking reason why he has to uh, drop by the ticket. It's a bad look. I remember the time back in 1972 where uh, George McGovern was uh, nominated as uh, the Democratic pre candidate for president again, running against Richard Nixon and McGovern uh, uh, selected Thomas Eagleton, the senator from Missouri, as his running mate. However, the news came out that Eagleton has some mental health issues, including electroshock treatments. And unfortunately, uh, McGovern had to uh, reject him as a running mate, choosing our Sergeant Shriver, a Kennedy brother-in-law. How would it look, and it didn't, it looked like uh, the party was disorganized. It looked like uh, can't can't do anything right. They're not organized. They're not disciplined. They're not structured. And thus, Richard Nixon had a second round. And I'll tell you, it's gonna look. It would look very bad if uh, Biden steps down. It shows that the party is in disarray. It shows that it can be bullied into making and giving up on decisions as easy to cave into uh, mega esque bullies. And our pundit class, like the geniuses in the New York Times, suggested that uh, Biden should uh, step down. For what? One bad night. One bad night. He, he didn't look good. He didn't want that one bad night. Therefore, but look, but they don't uh, mention uh, the career of Trump through the last decade. Is is uh, going down the golden escalator? We got gold everything. Well, says he had a golden. Anyway, promising to uh, uh, prose prosecute Mexican immigrants, prosecute mu persecute Muslims, and a, a revelation that he he bragged about grabbing women by the during the the uh, Access Hollywood uh, tape, and all the way through. He lied about his taxes. He cheated on his taxes. And that got him a, a, a big whopping fine from the state of New York. He was convicted finally of of uh, business fraud, redrawing the accounts of his uh, corporation to hide the hush money payments to Stormy Daniels. That's another thing. A couple of months after his wife, Melania, gives birth to their child, Baron, Trump in, goes to a golf club and all of a sudden starts, decides to bang a porn star. And we're supposed... And then he threatens all kinds of racism and anti-Semitism. Let's not forget... Let's not forget Charlottesville, August uh, 2017, shall we? Gangs of neo-Nazis and neo-fascists and racists marched down the streets of Charlottesville screaming, Jews will not replace us! Like hell they won't. Like hell we won't. Anyway, 
and he said there were very fine people on both sides. And he constantly gives in to, to, to despots such as Putin and Xi Jinping and Kim Jong-un. He's, like he's a fanboy to them. He's, he's Putin's uh, puppy dog. Hence, he, he, in Helsinki, he dis, disregarded uh, the evidence of American intelligence agencies. And, and he, he chose to abide, go along with what Putin told him. And, and then, when the Kurds were trying to defend themselves in Syria, Trump gave the go-ahead to Erdogan to invade the, the Kurdish districts of uh, Syria. And the Kurds were faithful allies to us. He betrayed our allies. And look at the crew he had around him. His advisors, like Steve Bannon. You know, Steve Bannon, who just uh, got into the federal prison for contempt of Congress. As and let's not forget his little scam about, uh, about that GoFundMe uh, page for building a wall, a wall against Mexico with private dollars. And it turned out to be a royal fraud. And Steve, uh, Stephen Miller, Stephen Miller, the author of the most viciously racist uh, immigration policy you can imagine. It was his bright idea to put, separate children from their parents, to put them in cages. Like they were animals. That's how he... Trump and his gang refers to uh, immigrants from Latin America, animals. A, a tall, balls-out racist. And the peop another one of his fanboys is his, is the religious right, the Christian nationalist gang. Mostly a gang of gang just like him. Charlatans and hustlers and con artists, people soaking uh, their followers uh, for donations so they could get a second or third or fourth jetliner. And and it's also a guy who who's just so blatantly dumb. I remember the time when uh, when uh, Trump was on a I'm sorry Navy Navy vessel, and they were discussing the the stealth technology for air jet jet fighters, you know, so they can evade radars. He actually believed that the plane was in would be invi invisible, like Wonder Woman's plane. At the time, we had to go to a conference in the island of Diego Garcia in the Indian Ocean. He said such things as, Are the people nice? How are the beaches? Like a little kid going to Disneyland. And let's not forget COVID. How he responded to COVID, or rather how he didn't respond to COVID. He just sat back, uh, denying the uh, denying the reality of uh, COVID, calling it a, a the, the Democrats' new hoax, and also just the most preposterous uh, ways to deal with it, like like horse paste ivermectin. That's the put, or 
injecting uh, bleach in you or injecting ultraviolet light in you. And he kept saying it's going to go away and go away. And approximately a million and a half Americans died. Morgues were filled up so that uh, they had to get freezer trucks for the for the bodies. Hospitals were understaffed and overburdened and under-equipped because our dear leader wouldn't authorize uh, any uh, mass manufacturing of the uh, of masks or or ventilators. He failed us. And of course, his refusal to concede defeat in 2020. And instead of graciously accepting uh, the defeat, accepting a transition, Trump kept harping about the stolen election and ramped up a gang, uh, a whole mob of his supporters to stampede the Capitol in a coup d'etat, threatening his vice president, threatening the lives of every of every member of Congress, even those who support him. And and Kevin McCarthy, who was then the House Minority Leader, kept calling Trump and his his uh, children tell him, kept telling him kept telling them to get their dad to uh, call off his mob and ultimately he did after three hours three or four hours of of damage of threats of people being killed at the behest of the glorious leader and he's still going about it his means are still harping about the uh, stolen election. Can we forget that? We mustn't. Joe Biden's a good man, an intelligent man, a forceful man, a man dedicated to the working people of this country. Trump is dedicated only to himself. And just like those Christian nationalist con artists, he's fleecing his disciples for every cent he can get out of them. Like the $400 gold-plated sneakers and the, and the $60 Bible you can get on Amazon for like five bucks tops. That kind of man, Donald Trump, can't be anywhere near the Oval Office ever again. So Americans, let's not get let's not get freaky about uh, one debate. One debate. One debate is not the entire election. There have been hundreds of several cases where a winning presidential candidate started out started off lousy in debates. I'm thinking about uh, Obama versus Romney in 20. 2012. Joe Biden is going to uh, learn from this uh, this mistake, reevaluate, and try a new strategy. New strategy, I would suggest, Joe is speak from the heart, speak the truth, tell the American people what a threat that Donald Trump poses in this country. And forget to talk about uh, dropping out. Joseph Robinette Biden will be re-elected as President of the United States in 2024. There, I said it. So don't worry about the pundits. The only pundit that matters is you, the American voter, on November 5th. Take your ass out into the polls and vote. Straight blue all the way through. And vote for Joe Biden. 
and save America. Save America from a dictator. Emphasis on the first syllable. <clears throat> Just, let's not forget how this corrupted, ignorant, paid-off uh, Supreme Court has dictated that that the president has authority to do whatever he wants in an official capacity, as opposed to an unofficial capacity, but there's no clear delineation. He'll be a dictator. And Project 2025, the brainchild from the rotten brains of the Heritage Foundation, will be their policy bible. They'll destroy protections for workers, they'll destroy the rights won by women and LGBTQ people. It's dictatorship. Get out there and vote. And make, let's make sure on November 5th, you, the voter, has the last word. Okay. Okay. I had my say. Advertisement stuff. All the work I do, this video project and my podcast and my blog and my poetry and my fiction, all my media work. All my media work costs money. I pay money for the for the website. I pay money to uh, for, for the platform for broadcasting the um, uh, the videos and the podcasts. I pay for the pay for it all out of my own pocket. And and that's where you come in. I would love for you to uh, uh, donate. Please hit the buttons. Either buy me a coffee or PayPal. And donate what you can so I can keep this work going and moving onward and upward. Thanks. And also my novel, Soldier of the Cross, is available on Amazon.com. It's the story of David Lucas, who as a young man in the early 60s is a drunk and a whore chaser and a school bully. He gets in trouble in the army. He comes out of it a born-again Christian, a total fanatical manly man for Jesus who just wants to serve Jesus. But how he goes about it lands him into disaster. Please purchase it. Soldier of the Cross on Amazon.com. Okay. And also, Hamperific is a lovely little CBD product store located on Snyder Avenue near 15th Street in South Philadelphia. There you'll find some of the finest cannabis infused products gummies and candies and lip balm and flower and hand sanitizer and dog treats. Dog treats, yeah. Do please look them up. HempHorrificLLC.com And also, my beloved career and business coach, Michelle Snow. Michelle is way excellent in helping you develop your professional career or small business. Let you know what you're doing right, where you need work, and help you network with other up-and-coming entrepreneurs and professionals. Please look her up. Growwithsnow.com Okay? Alrighty then. I stumble when I talk. But I know what I'm talking about. So, Joe, Joe Biden isn't a great orator. Who cares? There's more to running a government than uh, great oratory. This isn't the Roman Senate. The days of Daniel Webster and Henry Clay and John C. Calhoun, great statesmen in the period before the Civil War, are long gone. We need people who speak from the heart, people who are sincere, 
And that kind of man is Joe Biden. Please, vote for Joe Biden. And on November 5th, vote straight blue all the way through. Thanks. Bye.